Hi guys, here we are today at one of the fields where the grammar school keep their ponies. I've just done a couple and it suddenly occurred to me that I ought to do a video because I'm doing them hot. Um, so this is the last one I've got to do here. This is uh, the truck, you think you've probably all seen it. Um, it's slightly updated from last time. I've moved the position of the anvil. I've actually managed to drop it down about six inches which has made it much more comfortable, which I think is a bit more than six inches. You can see I've put the, the drop downs there and it all folds back up into that hole once the drawer slides out. Um, nothing else changed, I don't think. Still got the forge in there. Um, and around this side, so I think most of you have seen it, got the gas in there. And it's one of these gas bottles that you don't replace, you just keep filling it up. So it's permanently in, installed in the truck. And you just fill it out through that hole there. The one next to the Defender bottle opener. Which was kindly left there by the previous owner. Right, so we've had a look at the kit. Let's get ourselves a horse. Now there's one left over in the stables, so I'll go and get it. Alright, this is Aero. She's an old girl. Most of the ponies that uh, come to the, the club are old and retired. And to be fair, the club gives them a new lease of life. Sometimes they've been stuck out in a field for years because no one wants to ride them anymore. The kids have grown up and lost interest. They give them to the, the pony club or this you know riding club, school club. And it uh, brings them back to life. You know, they've got kids all around them, fussing them. Grooming them, riding, have little shows and things. They don't do masses of work, but it really can perk up an old pony. Gives them an extra few years on their existence. And this is one of them, this is Aero. And I say, she's knocking on a bit. I knew her many, many years ago when her previous owner had her. I used to shoe her. Um, and now she's ended up here. So we're just going to whip the shoes off. And she has what they call rolled toes, because she's old, a little bit stiff. She can trip, because uh, her, her joints are a little bit stiff, so her legs don't flex up quite as easily as they used to. Comes to us all in the end. So she wears these rolled toes so that, A, she can break over a bit easier without tripping. And also it stops her wearing the toes of the shoes out because that's what uh, would happen without the roll. So I'm just cleaning the foot up, so taking the shoe off, cleaning the foot up, just trimming it down like I would normally do. Yeah, we've seen all this before, I think, on some of my other ones. It's really weird weather we've got here today. It's like mid-December. And it's something like 12 degrees, which is unbelievable. I think in some places in London it's gone up to sort of 14 or 15. But uh, it's quite nice because it's you haven't got to get dressed up in all your woolies. Just check the level. Just tidy up the edge. And because she's got the rolled toe, I'm just going to put a, a bit of a, a roll on with the rasp. Now I'm going to put the, the shoes in to warm up while, before I take the other one off. Then they'll be hopefully nice and ready by the time I get the other one off. So let's spark up the fire. to climb up to light this up because all the switches and things are right at the back which is, seems a bit of a silly idea but there you go it works the shoes are in I'll just spread them about a bit I'll turn it down it goes from one to four on the power of the fire and I'll just knock it down to about two that should be plenty to heat them up by the time I've got the other shoe off. This is a double burner, a twin burner, and it's 
pretty fierce if you get it up high. See that gauge is in the middle, it goes right the way around to the right. Okay, let's get ourselves focused up for a bit of hot shoeing. Put it the camera like that and you should be able to see what I'm doing with the other foot. You can see how much mud there is about at the moment. Look from there, from the knee down, that's caked on dried mud on that horse. It's all the way up the back legs, right to the top, and it's all well, it's all over it. They really enjoying the mud up here. It's something I'm not enjoying at all. You know, this is supposed to be clean concrete here, but it's um, <laughs> covered in mud. Whip the other one off. See how we get on. Just knock the nails down. This makes life easier, no one treads on it. And they don't fall out and get in people's tyres. Get all the muck out. And get it out of the way. A few bits of frog to come off there. Just clean out all this useless sole. This is all just dead, dead sole that's accumulated because they don't do an awful lot of road work. These ponies, the sole doesn't drop out. You find that if they were doing road work, the concussion from the road work actually makes the, the sole drop out. Um, not all in one go, but you know, bits flake off here and there as they're hammering, well I say hammering, but as they're going up and down the roads. But on the soft, which is what most of these tend to do, the majority of the time, it doesn't do it. And it just stays there. Level it off again. Check for level. A little bit off there. Just tidy up around the edges, the ragged edges. And again, put a roll on. Just rasping that toe right off, about probably 30 degrees. See the dust falling out, it's all just mud. Right, let's get some shoes out and see what we can do. All right, you can see I've got the two old shoes there as patterns because what I'll do is I'll get a shoe out and use the old shoe, of course, assuming that it fitted properly, as a pattern to guide me. For the new one, it just makes things easier. Um, so I don't have to keep going backwards and forwards trying to get it right if you've got the old one to use as a pattern. And you can see how much easier it is on my arms. You know, the shoes turn just with a, a, a light tap, really. Whereas when I'm cold shoeing, I'm really belting seven shades out of the the shoes and I'm holding the shoe with my hand whereas here I've got the tongs to take out a little bit of vibration when I'm doing it cold I'm holding the shoe and it's all going straight into my arms and hands so this is a lot less stressful on me I think I'm going to be doing a lot more of uh, this hot shoeing you know, I've only just recently started doing it since I've had this truck uh, I've just you know, been doing one or two, but it takes a little bit longer, but it's certainly a lot less stressful. You're bending down for less, less time, so it's, it's, you know, it's better on your back. So yeah, I think I'll probably be doing a little bit more. So let's take the shoe over and see if it fits. Now unlike a shoe with a conventional toe clip, with this roll it's difficult 
to get it in the right place first time because there's nothing to pull against. You can't just pull the clip back into the centre of the toe and then that sort of holds it there and, and you, you sort of see where it fits and where it doesn't. This is a little bit more tricky because as I say there's nothing really to hold it in place. It's not far out, just wants a little tickle. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a, a bosh and then hopefully that'll fit. The state of that pony is covered. One I did earlier was even worse. I think it had found the most liquid puddle of mud it could find and rolled in it. Clean it off with the sleeve. I'll get through one or two of these tops. Wearing the sleeves out. And that, I think, is going to be about right. Looks pucker that one. Yeah, I think we'll leave that at that. We'll do the other one. Get the shoe out and then turn the fire off. Don't need that now. Again, just try up against the old one and instantly see what needs doing. So you can see how much easier it is, just a little tap here and there and it moves a treat. A little bit more on that outside I think. And that doesn't look too bad to me, it wants a bit pulling out I think maybe. Maybe not. Get it level. That's one thing that some people hot shoeing don't do is get them nice and level because they think well it's hot it's going to burn in it's going to fit anyway but that's not really the right way of doing it you know it's even though you are doing it hot it still needs to be level otherwise you can throw all sorts of things out. That's not quite going on right. That's a bit better. That wants a little bit of a rasp, I think, so we'll just get the kit from around the other side. Give it a little rasp. Got a bit of a high spot, I think, on there and there. So we'll just get rid of them and try again. Checking all the way around all the time just to make sure everything's just about right. And I think we're just about there. So now I just want to rasp the heels just so that they're less likely to be to sort of catch. Because I leave the heels just a little bit wide. I don't tend to leave them as wide as some people. Um, a couple of reasons. One is even too wide, although it might, in theory, be beneficial. Spend more time coming out, putting them back on because the buggers have ripped them off because they're so wide they've trodden on them and pulled them off. Sorry, I'm going to have to turn my back on you because it works better this way. The vice. But uh, yeah, I still leave them wide at the heel. So I'll just take them off, do the same to the other one, again apologies for my back, but the device works really only one way, otherwise it just keeps lifting up because it's braced at the 
bottom under the bumper. And that's the only thing that stops it turning round. So you have to sort of push against the brace, going that way, it's trying to push it up and round, so it's spinning round itself. Anyway, we're getting there. So that's about that. Let's just see where I've just taken the edge off. Now I need to go and cool them down. I haven't got any water with me, so there's a nice convenient puddle just behind me. So I'm just going to go and dip them in that. Right. Got them cooled out. Let's see if we can stick them on. Wire brush. Just take off all the mud, muck, loose bits of burn. Just get it nice and clean. You don't want to catch any little stones and things under the shoe because that's sure to cause a uh, an infection. It gets in somewhere down the white line or in a little crack. A couple of weeks later, you've got a crippled horse. Take the shoe off, pus pouring out, and all it is is something simple like a little bit of grit got in. So you want to make sure it's nice and clean before you stick the shoe on. I had a nice one the other day actually. I think it was just that a bit of grit got under the shoe somehow. Because in this weather when the, the, the mud turns to sort of slurry, it gets in all the little nooks and crannies and it, of course it carries all the little bits of stone and flint with it. And if you've got any sort of... Uh, cavities anywhere that it can get in, it will. I went out there, horse was lame, ten, very tender on the inside, took the shoe off, a little scrape round with a knife and bang, out came the pus. And she was uh, almost instantly sound once I released the pus. But uh, it doesn't often happen that way that you find them that quickly. Now this is just tightening all the nails up. It sort of bends it bends the ends to about 90 degrees to the wall and, and really sort of tightens the whole shoe up. And then we've got the next, which is probably the most important part in respect of holding the shoe on, is the finishing off. Now what we're gonna do get myself set up. Oh yeah, you probably haven't seen my new stand. This is a new all stainless steel stand. My old one was getting a bit past it. I decided to make myself a new one. It's much, much lighter than the old one. All out stainless. It's just bits I have kicking about. But it seems to work a treat. Anyway, I digress. All I've done there is cleaned out underneath the nails and shortened them to about eighth of an inch and then those clenching tongs just pull the nails back down over themselves so it's really locked the shoe on do the same the other side shorten the nails run underneath them clean out all the muck clench them down that's really what holds the shoe on if you're finishing off rubbish no matter how well they're fitted, they can still fall off. So that's the way I was taught and luckily it seems to work. That's the first one. Let's see if we can set ourselves up for the second one. I might actually move the camera around for the other one. Right, let's see if we can get a better, a bit of a closer view. Again, the wire brush. Get rid of all the nasty 
bits of mud and muck and burnt bits. Take out a couple bits of extra soul and muck that's lying about. And that's quite nice there. Get the dodgy hand working. Once that first nail's in and the shoe hasn't moved, you're on your way. So often you put that first nail in and the blooming thing shifts over. Especially when you've got no clips. Doesn't happen quite so much on a hind because you've got the two. Or front because you've got the one, but it certainly happens on these rolled toes because you got none. You see there I'm still having to, I'm, I'm adapting to this bad hand. It's amazing how your body adapts. It's still useless to me but you see I'm using my sort of like, I don't know, what's it, one, two, third finger rather than my index finger to find the nail coming out because the top two fingers I can't feel bugger all. I'd probably, well I'd certainly know it when the nail went through my finger or into my finger because it's, it's numb on the outside and it seems to be super sensitive on the inside, sort of under the skin so I would feel it but it's much easier just to use my third finger and so my body's sort of adapted to it naturally. It's weird. Right. Get her up on the new stand. I haven't bothered with the uh, fancy cutout for the frog like I did on my old stand. And then shorten the nails, clean out underneath them. Just so there's no muck. It's nice and smooth. And then just clench them down back into themselves. Well, it's not back into themselves, back on, oh, into the foot. Makes it nice and smooth. Take off the excess. You can see she's got a crack down the front of that foot. She's got them on both front feet and I don't know why. She's always had them, even when I used to do her as a young horse. They don't affect her. They don't split open. On some horses, if you've got those sort of cracks and you let the foot get even slightly long they open up and you get infections and all sorts of trouble in them but this one just doesn't seem to affect her do the same the other side and we're almost there she doesn't have hind shoes this one a lot of the Grammar school ponies don't have hind shoes. There's a few that do, but quite a lot of them don't. They don't really need them, they don't do that much work. And there we go. Let's see if we can have a bit of a close up of the finished product. There we go. Pair of front roll toes. Thanks for watching, and hopefully, we'll catch you on the next one.